Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So behind me is the house where um, Charles Rolls lived uh, the latter part of his life. And he was living here till just before he died. I don't know if he spent the night before he died here or not. But um, uh, Charles Rolls is famous as being one half of the Rolls Royce company. So he was born at, at Barclay Square. We're in London on Conduit Street. And Barclay Square is just that away, just out of sight, um, beyond, um, beyond Bond Street. Um, anyway, um, he was born there to Welsh aristocratic parents. His um, father was Lord Clang Gatry, if I pronounce it correctly. And so despite being um, English born, he spent most of his childhood in Wales, uh, in Monmouthshire. But it was disputable whether Monmouth was part of England or Wales. I remember seeing a recruiting poster for the Welsh Guard said you can join if you're born to Wales or Monmouth. So it's changed hands back and forth over, the t over time. At the moment it's considered part of, uh, part of Wales. Um, anyway, but he, in, in his own mind, he definitely was Welsh. But he, he went to uh, Eton, and he was always um, a grease monkey, um, tinkering with uh, uh, cars and things, or anything mechanical, which has been invented. It was um, quite unusual for someone of his social background to want to do that. He was fixated with speed, with um, uh, trains or boats, um, and eventually cars, um, to some extent horses, anything that could go really fast. Uh, so. Um, he wasn't that academic, and he had to go to a crammer after Eton, which just um, was going to make sure he knew enough Latin and Greek to pass the exam for Cambridge. Uh, he didn't; it was fine at maths. So you had to do an exam in, in Latin, Greek, and maths to get in, and that was going on some form to the 1960s. If I got that right, no matter what subject you wish to read, even if it wasn't related to one of those three or even two of those three, you had to do all three subjects. Uh, so yeah, he got in and he went to Trinity and Trinity College being one of the grandest in Cambridge at the time, reading um, uh, mechanical um, sciences. So that was obviously his, his first love. Um, and he bought a car at the age of 18, went over to France to do it. I don't know if cars were even, even uh, existed here. Um, he uh, had the third ever car in Wales. So he's from a very wealthy family. Um, so the French were all making Peugeot automobiles. And people often say motor car back then because if you simply said car, they simply meant horse-drawn carriage. If you read The Eve of Waterloo by, by Byron, obviously set in 1815, he's talking about cars going along, by which he means um, horse-drawn carriages or wagons, car-like cart. But they, they meant an automobile, obviously, because it, was, it moves itself. The auto is the self, the mobile is the moving, or indeed a horseless carriage. Um, so uh, he had the um, he had one of the first I think the first ever horseless carriage in uh, Cambridge. Uh, so he graduated and he immediately set about setting himself up as a car dealer. So his father um, gave him a lot of seed corn capital to purchase Minerva cars manufactured in Belgium or Peugeots from France and sell them here. So he had a chance meeting with um, Mr. Royce at a <coughs> at the Midland Hotel in Manchester. And uh, there was a dispute about how many cylinders they would have, but eventually went with Royce's, Royce's uh, idea. So Royce was more of the mechanical engineer. Um, Ro uh, Rolls was more of a, um, a dilettante when it came to uh, mechanics. And he acted as a salesman because he had the upper class cachet. He had the contacts, well, the cachet and the cash. So he knew the right sort of people. So his friends and relatives would be purchasing these cars. And they set themselves up. I'm not sure their showroom was right here. Um, in Mayfair, and then he also got into planes. He'd been, he helped set up the Automobile Club of Great Britain. He'd originally been part of the French one, and thought that the, um, I can't remember what the, the, this bizarre name of the legislation was, like the Self-Moving Vehicles Act or something. Felt that it was too restrictive. He tried to have slightly quieter cars. He didn't realize it annoys people, it annoyed people, frighten the horses, literally. Um, but yeah, and he, he went to the United States to sell his vehicles there. So they started producing their own. But yeah, he got into flying, and he was just beaten by a Frenchman, I can't remember his name, was it Blériot, Eriot, something like that, in 1910, who managed the first um, flight across the English Channel, I think from France, sort of from the United Kingdom to France. Well, therefore, Rolls had to do the other, other way, I think, going from France to England. And then later on, he did the first one to double back, to fly from one country, I can't remember where he started, over the other, turn around and come back without landing. It took him 95 minutes. That's only, that's only like um, 20 miles, or is it less? Is it 12 miles or 20 kilometers? Something, something like that. It's, it's, very short, it's a very short distance. And that was obviously amazing at the time. I know we laugh at that now, but remember just how uh, new 
aviation was. And then he was flying um, some, some experimental flight in Hampshire in 1910 where um, something came off his plane, he crashed and died. He was only 32. So that is Rolls-Royce, uh, whose name is immortalized in Rolls-Royce Company, uh, one of the most expensive makes of British cars. That is a little bit about Charles Rolls. Toodaloo.